Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello, welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today we're here with Johnny and Jerry Fitzgibbons come in for his debut on the couch. Jerry, thanks very much for coming on. Very welcome. Welcome aboard. Very welcome. Um, yeah, we're here, we're in basically to talk about Ireland's draw today. Uh, earlier on today, they were drawn with Wales and um, Denmark, who obviously were the last competitive team we played, and they stuffed us. First of all, the way for Le the way for Na Nations League for me, it's a it's a very confusing type of format. I'm not really, I'm not really getting it to be honest with you. I don't think any of us it are. Was, yeah, it was, it was funny. Like, usually you, you go on Twitter or whatever, and you you know, there's a lot of people or there's a lot of journalists, especially that seem to know what was going on, and you can you can generally find out exactly what's happening straight away. Here today, the whole lot. What is this? What what's happening? Because it just seemed to come out of no place. I know we've been kind of sidetracked with the the contract negotiations and then the doom and gloom after the. The way the the Denmark games went, and this seemed to just appear at no place. It it's just from what I can see is, it's a it's a league of friendlies. That's what. It yeah, is. that uh, it's strange. Jerry, you seem to you seem to kind of know. You're speaking of very. You seem to that. know better, better <laughs> than us. Better than us too, anyways. Well, all, I, all I'm aware of that you've got your three tiers. Yeah, four. Uh, four, sorry, four, four mm -hmm. twelves, forty-eight. There's probably two, two sections that have four teams. Yeah, in. yeah. But. Uh, I, I don't know how it works with the top lads, whether it's only one, they play off the top four winners of that group, they play off and the, the loser of that goes down, or two go down. Yeah, there's two, two go like a third place. There's two, yeah, yeah. there's two places available then for the qualification for the Euros. Yeah, it, it's, it's oh. supposed to be just kind of, you know the way you had the old rankings of FIFA rankings and all, and all like that? It's, it's a kind of a, another mode of that really, because you'll have your relegation promotions among the four different groups as well. But um, yeah, no. It's um, I suppose it's it, it, they're trying to fill the gaps really. It's the way the modern football has yeah. gone. Trying to get as much TV money as you as you can really have it, and it, you'll have the what the, the games are going to be played on the on the normal times when there's friendlies, and then the playoff or the kind of the knockout big four, whatever we want to call them, are going to be played on the odd odd years at the recent um, mm -hmm. World Cup or European Championship or whatever. So it's it's just more kind of milking the audience that way, but um, still better than friendlies. So. Uh, it, it, it is. I'm, I'm into, uh, yeah. The, the only thing I wouldn't like about it is, I'm all for you know. There was a lot of deadwood friendlies there um, uh, over the years, and you know, especially you know the way they have their timed as well during, pre, uh, during the middle of the football season, the Premier yeah. League and stuff like that. The only thing that I don't like about this is, and especially for, I uh, actually love when it's international time because we get to do videos do like well. this. Sure that's my passion. <laughs> I, I, I actually yeah, yeah. But no, but you know there, there is a lot of oh international break. There, there is definitely yes. Yes. We, we get the, definitely the best oh, absolutely, um, yeah. and content. And, and, and we're lucky. We're lucky. You know, in Ireland as well, there's a team that we can attach ourselves to. It's not always the, it's it's probably, there's probably a downside to this as well. You know, you talk about young players. Mm -hmm. Why are not yeah. these guys? Will they, will they get a run? Because it is going to be competitive. That's that's what I was just you know? about yeah. just about to say. You know, and he'll scare the light on me. And it's it's a thing with. Um, it's not just O'Neill, there's loads of other managers, everyone is so short term based and they just want to get results and they, do, they don't want to spend that time in betting in players and this is, this unfortunately is an opportunity for a lot of, look there's a long list of players that we've gone through, we've spoken yeah. many, many, many well, we times. Get, we, we'll get on to them later on and we get on to the manager and stuff like that but in terms of just Wales and Denmark, how he's feeling about them as opponents, I mean I don't see what the big ordeal is about Wales personally, I think we've a better team than Wales. I think Wales have three better individuals probably in their positions in Bale, Ramsey and um, Allen. But in other positions, and even that, Allen, like Hendrick isn't far off at uh, Allen, do you know what I mean? They're, they're not that far uh, in between. Ramsey probably is better than our midfielders. Um, Bale obviously is better than, you know, but in saying that, Coleman did keep him quiet whenever he played against them. And, um, you know, if you look at, if you look at their team compared to ours, I, I, like when we, when they that game India Viva, they didn't really cause us too much hassle. No, we should have mm. beaten it. And um, and they should have had Bell and uh, Taylor sent off anyway. But and then they didn't really cause us that much hassle. Like I don't remember them, you know, really scaring us when we did play them. And when McLean scored and we beat them, one, I don't really remember them scaring them. So I don't really see what what the negative thing is in regards to playing Wales. I mean, they are a very aging team. If you look at their defence, especially, it's a very aging team. They don't really have any superstars coming in uh, in the younger department. But um, in terms of Denmark, yeah, I would fear them. But at the same time, I think we're going to have a better team. I think we'll have yeah. a better team when we face them this time. I wouldn't fear them. 
even at the match in, in Denmark when I was out there I, f- I found that we held our own and we weren't that good on the night yeah we certainly held and then we just we did we, we did, we did ride our luck a good bit yeah, but we, were, we were 1-0 up here we should have gone 2-0 up it would have been a totally different game and I think it's the first mistake that Martin O'Neill made was at half time when he took off the holding midfielder and it just left it left an open Everything for Ericsson, just wide open space, yeah. and nobody on him, <coughs> and it just controlled the whole game. It was, it was a madness. Look, we we won't run, stir up that thing, but it was just a, a moment of madness. It breaks my heart that, that James McCarthy you know, uh, wasn't fit for that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. But, but even the other side, you, you take Stephen Ireland had two very good games there recently. He yeah. actually played well, and it, he, as soon as Lampard came in, and he dropped them. So maybe there is something there as well because I lo- I love Stephen Ireland when he was playing at the top of his game. He was absolutely outstanding. And it was great. Delighted to see him coming back there a couple of weeks ago. He did play against really United played. there. He's he just—he he was yeah. like all he was short of was scoring two goals. Yeah. Like he was very close. He, was, he, was unlucky. Just he looks very unfit though. Yeah, well he does look like a player who's really just just getting back to terms. A bit kind of like Balassi at Everton yeah. at the moment. He does look like kind of a little bit sluggish, but you can still see he has that bit about him. Absolutely, he's one of the players that we had that was a box to box and could do it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's running off the ball was tremendous. He'd always come in on it. It reminded me of Paul Scholes, so he used to come out the ball. That season, he always scored. That season, when he played for Ericsson for City, he was on fire. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah. That player of the year in that free roll. Like, we, oh, yeah, we, right. we can only dream of having a player like that again. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, like, in terms of, of, the, of the games, like, do you think, as well as that, you got to look at it, in the game, the, play, the second leg, only it had to go for it. Whereas this in this time around, he doesn't really have to go for it going how do you know what I mean? He can park the bus or he can decide if we're gonna play ball or not this time, whereas before obviously he didn't have to decide that, you know? Yeah, um no, I wouldn't like going back to what you said initially, I wouldn't fear either team. Like as you said, we are gonna be set up a hell of a lot better. Um and also, you bear in mind as well, the, the likes of your Ericsson especially, who comes, is one of these players that really comes to fore when it's a massive, massive game. He's not going to have that same mentality in it, in, if you want to find a glorified, friendly. Yeah, it's, true, yeah. um, it's what, it's the middle of October the, ga- the game is going to be here. He's not going to be that arsed, really. You know, if he's still at Spurs or wherever he is, he's going to be more concerned about Champions League or whatever. So um, I think he goes September, October, September, November. November. Three months, yeah. Yeah, October, three months. Yeah, Every so, game has to be So, like, the, the, like he's, he's not going to be in that red-hot form again. And even he's... It's not that he's off the boil, but th- that he hasn't shown that form again um, for Spurs recently either. So, you know, despite the opposition, the, the, there's nothing really that would, you know, people are kind of overreacting. I think they're looking at a, a, a freak result, for want of a better word. We just gave far too much room. Yeah, the like the, that, that, that decision at half time was just mad. It's mad but anyone in football, we've all been in a position like that. No matter what manager or whatever team you're playing, you've all been there where you go one up and all of a sudden you give away a stupid goal like we did full back giving the ball away goes into Ericsson and bang then the second one went in when we should have been 2-1 up yeah so after that then wasn't McLean there should have great, well yeah he should have scored just across score. the goal yeah. he went you know the wrong foot actually turning in the other way he was right yeah that's yeah, unfortunate yeah but I, I, I just I, there was a big, obviously there's a big mixed reaction um, there's uh, been a, just a huge mixed reaction in general like, there's the hangover everything, isn't there yeah. the, both in terms of the result not qualifying then the O'Neill saga etc etc yeah. It's like one of those. Once we get back on the pitch, and you know, mm. we're in Lansdowne. But I think that's why the friendlies in March are quite key now. I mean, it is a chance, and uh, we do have a list of, of, of names that we get into. But I wanted to kind of touch on Martin O'Neill and the and the um, signing the new contract. A bit of a bizarre time to to announce it. It's kind of it, they kind of did it in a kind of roundabout way. Obviously, Coleman's coming back, so everyone's feeling good about that. Mm-hmm. Then there was the draw tomorrow, so they kind of fit it in between. I thought it was. It's kind of clever by the FAI almost to kind of yeah, do it like that because there would have been a hu- imagine they had it done last week there would have been a huge backlash. I, yeah, I, but I don't blame him for what he did. Now himself personally, mm-hmm. the guy is it was the end of his job, and it's in it was in his contract that he could actually go and talk to clubs, which he did do. If there's something comes up, that's probably what he wants us to do. So I mean, if I was in his position and a couple of jobs came up, you go for it, see what's about. It could be better for you what you want. Yeah. So I don't blame him that way. You know? I, I definitely get that point. I just think the whole situation, and this is right from the the post match uh, press conference with Tony Odono after the Denmark game. Since well, then, Tony always yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Since, since then, there's been a whole <laughs> mismanagement of the situation from O'Neill and par- partly the FBI as well. Like there's still there's like you, you see O'Neill's press conference again today, and that's th- them same issues and that. Bitterness, anger, resentment, whatever we want to call it, is still there, and that's that's not healthy. 
Um, and that, that, I think the whole thing was could have been managed a hell of a lot better to avoid. I know they're trying to do a rescue limitation now. With, you know, as I said, with a bit of bit of news there, and we'll try and soften this in. But are things okay at the moment? No. No. Um, and in what way? Just the mood of the manager. Um, he's trying to ha- he's trying to pick a fight with every media media guy he can get hold of. That was he lost the head with O'Donoghue again today. He had went on another bit of argy argy with with the Sky uh, reporters as well. Um, like managers will go for other jobs in club football because club football is still you know it's on a higher level unfortunately to international football at the moment but there's a, there's a way you can manage that and you can still look at the other jobs and come back and say okay no it wasn't for me etc etc turn it down not to go down what do you mean are we still talking about this you know there's a way of managing a situation and i think he's ba- he's managed it very very yeah. r- badly in my mind I just 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 the whole negativity there's no need for it there's enough doom and gloom yeah, as i say one one game in it will be forgotten about true true you know. Yeah, and fickle sporters and all that. Is, yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Just the, the thing that annoys me the most is the way he kind of flirted around with, um, you know, with other clubs, and then he decides, oh, I'll come back and I'll just, I'll, I'll take the Ireland job, as if it was like it was just going to be left there for him. And I can kind of see the FAO's way of thinking of it because, uh, as is, I said previously, it's like you look at Dundalk after getting taken over now by Peak Six, yeah. and you know Stephen Kenny has a chance to go off and. You know, maybe make history with Dundalk, Big time, which uh, yeah. I, you know, if I was him, I wouldn't step away from that to go to the Ireland job right now. Um, maybe in the future, but Chris Hutton as well, he's doing a good job at Brighton. I don't think he's going to leave that. And if he has a bad run with the Ireland job, then he's not so not looked at. Yeah, he's, he's not he's one for the future without that. Yeah, so he's not looked out. So just, yeah. I, I think in a way, it suits all parties. Having O'Neill there, um, yeah, I mean, you know what you're going to get from, him. and he has produced some 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 yeah. very very good moments. But at the same time, I just it, it's the, it's the whole thing of oh um, that wasn't that wasn't what I wanted. I'll just take the Ireland job as if it was like a consolation yeah. prize. And that, yeah, that's I the thing that it's actually unfinished with him. How do you that's mean? Right it. Just the, the job itself is totally unfinished. If he'd gone out now at the moment, it's like going walking out halfway through. What you want to do? You know this. There's a few players on the fringe that, that are there, and people say there's no young lads coming through. They're actually hard. Yeah. Now we have a list of them, but um, do you think he will bring in the the? the yeah, I do. I think he'll bring, certainly bring up the turkey, and see what happens. Yeah. But if somebody st- and, and gets stuck in and they do the job, there's no reason why he shouldn't put them in. Yeah. Now I have a whole lo- uh, list of people here that I believe. Now you can add in some if, if I'm missing any. But uh, Sean McGuire, Preston mm-hmm. striker, Scott Hogan striker, Aston Villa. Uh, Alan Brown for Preston, Conor Hurrahan at Aston Villa, Greg Cunningham, Enda Stevens, they're about left backs, uh, Matt, Matt Doherty can play right back or left back, uh, Declan Royce at West Ham, obviously centre back, uh, Liam Kelly, who's like an attacking midfielder, kind of similar to the uh, Wales Hulham mould um, at Reading. Then you've got Daryl Horgan, who's doing quite well at the moment for Preston on the left, and then uh, Andy Boyle then at Preston as well. Now that's just, uh, that was just a few. That I have just obviously th- th- yeah. there'd be a couple more just not at the top of my head, but um, you know these these are the players like you look at Cyrus Christie he played nearly the whole campaign, and he was playing for a Championship club. Yeah, and he was steady. He's as good as anybody at like, staying away. Yeah, yeah, to a degree. Yeah. Um, but what I'm saying is, if his argument is not to put Championship players in, then. You know, Christie's got a whole campaign under his belt, obviously because Coleman got yeah, injured, but still. Um, Doherty is, it was fine with Wolves. Um, Stevens has a lot of assists and, and is doing quite well at Sheffield United. Uh, Sean McGuire, before he got injured, obviously we all know. And I'm not saying he's the answer or he's godsend or anything like that. I just, it'd be nice to see him get a 90 minutes cap yeah. under his belt. He's the type of player that's an, an absolute nightmare to mark. He's busy all the time. Remind me of Robbie Kane. Yeah. That way, you know the way he plays, and he's sharp and he scores goals. There's no reason not to put him in. It's not as if we're and, 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 and we're not fresh, fresh anyway. The thing is, he's not afraid to run at people, and we have a lack of that, real lack of that in our yeah. team. And we have, say, probably Robbie Brady's going to be out now till yeah, the exactly. summer. You know, he'd be lucky to get back for the September game. Hopefully, he does. But um, I'd say Brady and probably McLean are the only ones who run at people. Yeah. Do you know it for us? And even at that, McLean doesn't really run at people. He runs down the wing and tries to whip a ball in. So, 
We just good at it. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying that we just we don't have a lot of players that run at people. So, you know, having that with Maguire would be a breath of fresh air. But then again, it it it'll, it'll depend on the, the brand of football in which we are playing. Because if you're going to be long ball and balls up to to, to say Shane Long and Sean Maguire, yeah. who are quite small lads, in, like in comparison to centre back, would be, you know, he's not going to be able to play his natural game. But even long balls up to a big fella, it doesn't work. Yeah. You know, you gotta look at it up to their feet. I wouldn't be a fan of it yeah. myself either. No. Like th- when Wes plays, we were more constructive going forward. You just see those little passes, intricate going in, in mm. through centre backs and that. Go ahead, John. I was gonna say the, the problem is, and it's pro- it's more of it. There's two big problems. See that there's a lot of young players there, and we're probably missing loads as well, who are more than due. yeah we're just kind of yeah. the bigger the, the, of the, the big few ones. and I mean and Brown's been doing very well for Preston and he's the shot I, 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 think, I think the point is there's quite a number of players and the fact that we don't have options is complete and utter bullshit really because there is options there and um, there's two problems one is O'Neill is so reserved and so bloody stubborn at times and he won't pick these players and now he kind of has the extra excuse of and he even said it today in his press conferences but these are qualifying games you know there's a chance of qualification here I'm going to have to play my my strongest team and it's the whole short term mentality and that's what I fear about because these kids deserve football and it's as we, as we said at the start there's not as if we're flush with numbers or you know there's, there's world breakers in the first team at the moment keeping them out is there? Well you know I, I think back to the to the Euros and you know he, he wasn't afraid to play Duffy he did bring him in yeah, and he did play him, against yeah. you know France and stuff yeah. like that so there is the um, um, and O'Dowda as well actually he's not on he's the list but um, he was, I didn't put him on the list because he's, he's established kind of, kind of now in the squad at least you know um, I know Horgan's been in a few squads but he's never really gotten a run so he's not getting a foot run for Preston either though it doesn't help yeah but he's been doing well with them lately yeah. uh, and he's been getting on the score sheet and stuff like that so that's why I was saying even give him a run like see how he gets on at international level see if it's for him you know these friendlies are, are, are there to, to, to look at people so why not actually look at them you exactly know? Uh, I just I, do, I would like to mix you know players that play reg- normally and then some players like step in and say, say Hendrick you know have a breakout team and let say Hurahan and Brown maybe sit in and let Arthur you know have a breakout we know these players can play when when called upon you know and they're playing the Premier League so we don't really need to, to worry about them but th- these players need to you know get used to playing in you know what I mean because we do if you think of our midfields we do actually have very good ball playing midfielders there, and and, and Duffy with, with Brighton yeah, earlier on the season didn't he have one of the best distribution uh, rates yeah, in the Premier? P- Pinged the ball like fifty yards, yeah, and, it and scored from that as well. And then you go back to Ireland, and it's uh, yeah, up up in the air. Um, I mean, this was a pass. This yeah, oh no, absolutely this, yeah. no, no, no. He was flying, he was flying yeah. earlier on in the season, and the, and the players are there, um, and we're, I don't think we're getting the most out of them. I really yeah. don't. And I mean that I don't mean the team necessarily. I mean the whole overall squad. And like you, you look go back to the Denmark game, and it was Murphy up front, and he's old, and yeah. God love him, he's a trier yeah. and all that. But he looked like he'd cement in his cement in his boot, and balls being yeah. lumped up in the air. And there is other players here with the ball player and midfielders that we have, and we could genuinely make a lot more use out of the the quality that we have, not just come back to to, yeah. to spaceman football all the time. Did I? I forgot Greg Cunningham in that list. Yeah, good left Cunningham, back. Cunningham's there. Super left good back. But if you you, 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 you picture this right. You got your ball playing midfielders, and you got Coleman on one side, bombing on, mm-hmm. and you got either Stevens or Cunningham. Or if Ward's still yeah. there, because Ward can still he can still do a job. He's still he playing Premier League football. He's at the highest yeah, level out of all of our yeah. uh, left backs. So you know you can't rule him out completely. Somebody, he went over as a left winger originally from Bowes. He's not a striker. He played yeah, a left winger. Played a striker. Right. Yeah, that's what he was. You know, but he said he said probably it's his best season ever. Yeah. Well, last you season know. I don't think this season. Yeah, last season I'm talking about. Oh, sorry. Yeah, my last season. I thought you meant this. I thought you meant this. So steady for Ireland. Yeah. yeah, really steady. I was surprised. He done well against Moldova as well. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Didn't he set up the the two goals? He did. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, well, definitely set up Murphy for one. I yeah. think he was in, if he wasn't involved, get the direct assist. He was definitely involved in the other at the earlier on in the move. But it was a player that looked like he was dead a year or two previously as well. He's like as you said. But look, yeah, no, you have your two left backs and yeah. or your two full backs. You have your attacking midfielders, ball ball playing and midfielders. Then you need a striker that can make use of all that, don't you? Yeah. Well, I I think uh, you know if you how many of these players are gonna stick around? I don't think O'Shea's gonna stick around. I think yeah. Wesley's had his day. Yeah. You know, um, they they finished. Walters maybe even uh, like stru- injury, stru- struggling big time. You know, he's after yeah. having another yeah. knock back in the knee there again. So mm. I think that's one to, to factor without really. So you gotta you gotta take in, into mind that he probably 
with regards of if he wants to or not, he's probably going to have to start bringing in new players. I would personally would love to see Hoover him get a run. Yeah, he's been fantastic for Villa. Well. He's been fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, without Brady there, we're going to need someone like that who's, who's going to be able to... And he plays that actual position. You know, he plays as a centre mid or he can play kind of just as a number 10, which is where Brady was operating for some strange reason. I, I've never seen an Irish team all the years I'm supporting him since 1970. I've only missed about a half dozen games at home. And through the years, it's the first time I've seen where you have about six left footers on the team. You've taken Wardy, Brady, McLean, yeah. Horan, Wes. Wes. These are all left sided players, and we've never had that. You had Staunton on one as one, you had probably had Chidi up front on the left. You maybe had two. Good but you know, you never had the <laughs> And if you get a good left footer, like you had Brady, who's the outstanding, it's, it's great on the team. The balance, get the balance right. Yeah, you know, but if you're going to play a big fella up front and start hoping balls up to him, well, you've got to get someone playing off. The thing is, you know, he may, he may, he may use the big fella up front as Scott Hogan. Yeah, he's, he's got four goals in the last three games. So there you go. You know, he's like that stats too. Yeah, <laughs> homework was good. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it, like, it's a totally. So yeah. if, we, if we started a game with, with, with a good few of them playing, I'd be, I'd be delighted to see that. You know what I mean? And see, see who steps up to the mark. I, I think that Maguire would step up to the mark. I really, really do, and I'd love to see Preston get either into the playoffs or, or promoted. Um, for the next season, we have about five or six of them. <laughs> yeah, there, the there, there's the Premier League uh, quota yeah. doubled already, almost, isn't it? If, if Preston go up, well, they have a serious amount yeah, of. of talking about how many players that we have, you know, you're in the championship. You look at the top four in the Premiership at the moment. You bet you wouldn't name a dozen English players out of the top four teams. Yeah, probably. You know, mm. seriously, and you you're talking about getting Irish lads that can play at that level. The championship is nearly as good. You even watched there last night, Bristol. Yeah, brought, they brought they it all the way. You know, so serious, there's not that much. I mean, you will get the exception, and a lot of them are imported. Yeah, and well, it, 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 it's a matter of of who can step up to the mark, really. Yeah. You know. So yeah, the last um, <laughs> point I wanted to talk about was obviously. Will, will we leave now? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Seamus Coleman completed uh, 58 minutes of action last night for the uh, for the under 23s of, uh, of Everton. Um, if you didn't see it, go watch it. Uh, the, I think the highlights are on the Everton YouTube channel or on Everton's Facebook. But uh, you, there's a, just clips of him. And he, he honestly, I know it was an under 23 game, but he looked like he hadn't been out at all. He just looked his usual self. He was composed. Yeah. He was you know bursting down the right wing. He was crossing balls in. He was good defensively, you know. He's honestly looking at him, I was, I was just like, I can't wait to have you back, and I, I hope that he is back, captain of the side in March. If if he can, if he can continue with no injury setbacks, he came out today and said that he's hoping to be the inspiration for James McCarthy, which was a lovely touch. Yeah, great. Yeah, great. saying that he's okay. motivated to be the best he can be to prove to James McCarthy that he can come back and be. Go, uh, James had his operations this morning. Yeah, yeah it went su successfully. Yeah, he posted it. But uh, yeah, um, James yeah. Coleman, what a what a full back. Yeah, no, gr what, a, what a guy. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. All brilliant round gent, yeah. you know, yeah. wonderful footballer, a leader as well, which leader of the team. Yeah, yeah. Um, leadership, every, everything. We missed him so badly in, in, that, in that Denmark yeah. game. The, the the definition that of a role model. And, you know, often the, often the case, um, football professional footballers aren't the best role models, but you can uh, you can definitely say Shamey is um, a gent on and off the pitch. And what I loved mostly about his performance, his little cameo last night, was the fact that there's one one clip there where he absolutely smashes into a tackle, and you can see there's no fear, there's no worrying about has my leg okay or whatever, because it was a horrific injury, what double leg break. Um, has finished Manny's career, but yet, and you know, it'd be understandable if he had a bit of, oh Jesus, uh, I'll just, I'll just hold back on this tackle here a bit. You know, I'm not too keen of it, but he's smashing in. You know, as you would expect with him, and yeah. Well, he does. He's not known for smashing the tackles, but yeah, it was no, good to see him do it. He's, a, yeah. he, he's not like he's a two footer into tackle, but he's always very, very strong in the tackle. Yeah, and he's very aggressive, and you know, he goes flying, and even the that's even, where you have to be. Like, even the injury itself at the time yeah. was a brave tackle at the time. The two of them going, going for the ball. But um, no, it is, it is like just hope he isn't back for the derby. That's all. But <laughs> he, he never plays the derby. But anyway, <laughs> kids, if you ever if you want to go up and beat anyone, be Seamus be Coleman. Shame, yeah. Just just be Seamus Coleman. He's he's great. <laughs> he's in <laughs> Killy Bags. Yeah. Get your Donny Gall Celtic uh, top out there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No. Um, no. But uh, in all, in all seriousness, um, it, it's it's a real breath of fresh air to see him back playing. And if he can get back to anywhere near the level in which he was just before he got injured, because he was coming to serious uh, form at that point, 
Um, and you know he's Ireland's best player and he's our captain so yeah. we, we that's, that's badly difference. need him back in there. the crossing of his football is fantastic when he does get up the line and gets the ball in and they can take it full back on and score goals as well yeah and he does it in, he, he does it in, in the bigger moments you look at yeah. Wes Hulton's goal um, against Sweden who set that up you know and being in this other case and it, didn't he score what was it against Georgia in the Viva, he meant on that big long run, and then yeah, so we miss it. As good as Cyrus Christie has been going forward, we do we, we've missed Coleman in his intelligence. Just he ball. just knows when to do stuff, whereas Christie he takes a lot of gambles, I suppose. And Coleman's a lot better defensively, that's not lie. But, um, I, see, you know, I just I just don't understand the whole doom and gloom. I think people forget. The play, like that, that list of players we have Coleman's coming back I mean the only real serious injury and uh, even Alan George just came back from a, yeah. a serious injury he may get back into the squad if he, if he can uh, continue his rehab and you know get back out there on the, on the pitch but um, what was he going to say yeah, was our back four is super though I I mean, you could tell you've got an extra you've got even got five or six players that can actually come in right across the back four and that's you know, it. Got, and you've got, you got Long and Bernie, yeah, you've got Clark, you've got Duffy, you've got Royce. The creative was. area in the centre of midfield, that's probably where we lack. Just somebody who can, like Eriksson, really, just that can get space and find space and play the ball through for us to get goals. Yeah, but I think a lot of teams are, are, are lacking the, the, the Eriksson kind of type. You even look at England, like they don't really have a. Yeah, I think our midfield is okay if they're, if they're using the best of their abilities and they play the play style of football. That gets them you look at Arthur, Henrik. Brady, if he comes back, you know they're, they're three damn good ball players in the midfield um, that are more than capable of you know. Who were him? Brown. Exactly, the list goes on and on and on. You know, they, if they are using the right way, I think can be at the level we're playing at can be more than more than enough to win most games. Yeah. And the fullbacks as well that can come in. You know, like Coleman could play on the ground, no yeah, problem. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, I'm sure Ward's proven at, at Burnley even this season, at the start of the season, that he he can play. Yeah, um, if needs be, I know you made that mistake against Denmark, and you know what can you do now? Mm-hmm. There's no point in dwelling on it. It's happened, you know. Yeah, you know what gets me is when you hear um, there's nothing coming through. You, you, the odd on the TV, whether it be Duffer or whoever it is, the chat, there's nothing coming through. As they want to go back and play street football. In fact, there are, there's, there is a lot coming through. But that's the thing is yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people. The 17s will, and 19s have done extremely well. 21s have done really well. Yeah, so that's an easy argument. A lot. Yeah. Uh, no, see, that's the thing. It's the same thing with the Wes Hoolins, the best player in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone goes on, watches RTE, comes out and says, "Oh well, uh, Dunphy says it, so it must be true." Or yeah. Giles says it, so it must be true. Or Liam Brady says it. These are all pla- like men that they're living in a time when they were a player and they only see it from a point of view the game's evolved everybody knows it the coaching's evolved the players are evolved they're more they're faster than ever today they're more athletic do you know what I mean they monitor each other's injuries and stuff like that there's a lot bigger 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 difference than from when they were playing they were just told to go out play you know what I mean yeah and the unfortunate thing is, is idiot, well not idiots that's too strong a word people take everything that they those people say like it's gospel Literally. And, and they refer it and they, you'll know, hear the same arguments in uh, you know if it's just from mates or it's in the pub or whatever and it's this old but the reality is those people that are talking they're so far out of the modern game it's ridiculous like I question when you hear them talking sometimes like have you even watched a game recently you've no idea what's going on yeah. it's just coming out the same waffle every every now and again and, you know, and then unfortunately people the, that list of football is go watch those people Absolutely, go yeah. check them out go go, go to Manny's game and watch it for yourself and, and then, you'll, then you'll see it's just complete spoof even yeah. even Roy says at um, West Ham like he's playing against did he not keep yes. Harry, Quain, Harry Kane yeah, right there? Yeah, he's, so, yeah. he's the best striker yeah. and he was in, thrown, in thrown the, into the him there you go that you're starting Mark Harry Kane and, yeah. he, and he did a job on him and he kept him quiet and he's yeah. the best striker in the world right now if you don't mind me going back to Sorry, yeah, a go. younger age group again. Yeah. about a year ago I went to watch uh, Belvedere Derby play uh, I'm not sure who it was but uh, an, an older age group than themselves and they won 6-1 or 6 nil. and there was a young lad in the middle of the park now I won't mention his name in case he gets a swell header under that number 6 he was absolute class now I was there in that lawn last week and somebody said oh um, Belvedere were down they were playing an SFAI Cup semi-final or whatever I think it was against Salt Hill Devon and they're on about this young lad again and it was the same fella and he is absolutely you want to see him left foot he's left footed he can pass with both feet he's an absolute gem middle of the park now this guy's only under 14, 
15. Yeah. And I know there's people looking at him, whatever, but this is one for serious for the future. You want to see him. Yeah. Now, there's also uh, Jack Byrne then as well. Yeah, he's he's doing all right for old. His act together. And yeah. He lost his way a little bit. Yeah. He's a good lad, you know. Yeah. So he's uh, he's getting a permanent switch now to old yeah, as well. Yeah, so there's... Yeah. I think there's a l- there's a lot yeah. to uh, there's a lot more to be positive than negative. Yeah, yeah, but he went over with a, with a with a city. Yeah, he went over city, but then you know, he was low on doubt and that. But I think as for the future with him was really bright, but he did lose his way a little bit. Yeah, probably when he came back from Holland. Yeah, he's probably went to his head a little bit, which he can do because thousands go over. And you might only get one or two that'll make it. Yeah, but he has turned it around for himself now, and he's getting stuck in. So yeah, he'd be there as well. That's and we're doing well at all underage levels yeah. as well. So I mean, as I say, I think the future is bright. Yeah, and even yeah. looking at a bit, looking at a bit more, the it's great excitement with the League of Ireland coming back. You know, the, the, the so, investment yeah. in Dundalk, right. and then you know the link to Bournemouth, and then you know Bournemouth coming out today. What is it, twenty seven, twenty eight? Um, uh, richest club in, in world football, and then you have the link right. between the two yeah. and the, the possibilities of you know of players going both ways. There, there's a lot to be excited. Like if, if you want to be negative, you can be negative, but th- it isn't the case here. There's a lot. There's a lot of positives, and as you said, summed it up perfectly. There's more. There's more to be positive about than there is to be negative. Totally. So smile. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I think we'll, we'll uh, leave it there. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. We did get over. Um, 1,200 subscribers today actually so uh, if you haven't subscribed and you like these videos uh, subscribe now and uh, don't forget to click the bell for notifications so you get notified whenever we do have a video thanks very much for coming on yeah, cheers. I very much enjoyed nice that it was good fun um, thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV have a great week